A tough way for the seniors to go out here on Senior Day. ASU falling to Oregon State, 31 to 7 final score. Welcome to the Devil's Digest postgame analysis. My name is Nick Borgia. Alongside me is publisher Hoda Bino. And Hoda, we talked about it in our preview. I mean, this is a game where there's no bowl to play for. It's literally just for pride and playing for the seniors. And I don't know about you, but with me, I didn't really see a whole lot of that today. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Nick, I mean, shame on me to think that Arizona State was going to come out with a purpose, with a pride to send out the seniors on, on, on the right way. We talked about uh, worrying about too much emotion over passion, and honestly, uh, they were pretty much emotionless, I would, I would say, definitely in the second half, and I would say for also a good portion of the first half. I mean, the first half might have been the better out of the two halves for Arizona State, but uh, you just talk about not even close uh, to coming to establish a line of scrimmage for Arizona State. Uh, th this Oregon State just, just ran at will um, at, the, at the Sun Devils. Uh, not that they uh, uh, really faltered in their passing game. They're pretty, pretty effective in that, too. And, uh, and when it comes to ASU, on, on, on the other end, uh, it seems like there were players in quarterback uh, Trent Borgay's face almost on every other down. Uh, so the offensive line did not do a good job in that, in that area. And even the rushing numbers for Arizona State may have not been horrible, but in a game that uh, there was so many uh, issues with the passing game, you definitely need the running game to step up. But uh, overall, I am just uh, absolutely shocked that Arizona State came out as, as flat as they did. And really, like I said, in the second half, just uh, showed no signs of life. And, and I'll take responsibility over here. Shame on me thinking that Arizona State really had a legitimate chance at, uh, to win this game. Uh, Oregon State, when you talk about things to play for, they had nothing to play for. They're, they had seven uh, wins uh, c coming into today. All they're playing for is, is, is a better bowl, and I thought, and I probably was not the only one, that they were looking ahead to the Civil War against Oregon next week and really uh, would not be clicking on all, on all cylinders, but uh, just really unreal to see uh, what Arizona State accomplished or more importantly did, uh, did not accomplish today. I guess if there's one positive, uh, the, the game is an early kickoff, and it did uh, end uh, just about uh, at the th three-hour mark. So if you're looking for any positives, I guess may maybe that's one. But otherwise, there's not really a whole lot to talk about Arizona State's performance and even a semi-positive light. And Trenton Bourget and the offense held to just seven points. I mean, we saw them put up more points against Washington State last week, a tougher defense. Oregon State, obviously, a tough defense as well. But just really hitting rock bottom for this ASU offense in this game. Yeah, I mean, you, you did have the, the lone shining light, uh, X, X Valde, the, the running back transfer from Wyoming, playing, playing here in his last game at Sun Devil Stadium, and he went out uh, on, on a positive note. Uh, needed only 13 carries to have 108 yards. Did score the lone touchdown uh, for, the, for the Sun Devils. Uh, I think it was really cool to see him uh, uh, take, take in the stadium uh, one last time. I saw him walk to the student section over here, uh, lo looking at the fans that still were left over here, uh, it, you know, cheering him on and thanking him for everything he did for, for, for Arizona State. He's been uh, maybe even a lone bright spot for the entire offense uh, the, the, the entire year, may, may, maybe the entire team for that matter. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, just not establishing a line of scrimmage and not being able to impose your will uh, with, the, with the ground attack. And more importantly, uh, Trent Bourget, who I think only had 122 yards uh, passing. Uh, sure, there's some misreads uh, there, but uh, more importantly, uh, that offensive line did not do any favors uh, to, 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 to Bourget and the, and the offense as a whole in, 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 the, in their pass protection. Uh, like I said, I mean, this is definitely one of the better uh, de 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 defenses in the Pac-12. But I, I just felt like ASU maybe had some vulnerabilities it, it could uh, re really uh, to take advantage of. Maybe we saw some flashes um, in, in, in the first half, but the, se but the second half, that was just an absolute disaster. ASU was shut out in the second half, maybe kind of getting a taste of their own uh, medicine that the defense administered to Washington State uh, last week. But an absolute uh, pathetic uh, performance by the ASU offense. In Hode, another week, another game where we saw the ASU defense get absolutely torched. And we had talked about how this OSU offense was a pretty one-dimensional unit that theoretically could be easy to figure out, but definitely wasn't the case today if they put up 31 points on the Sun Devils. And Jack Coletto never even saw the field for the for the Beavers. Yeah, Jack Coletto uh, has been an, a nemesis uh, for Arizona State for the last two years in the running game. He, he doesn't play uh, uh, D D D Deshaun Fenwick, uh, one of the best uh, running backs uh, they have for Oregon State, did not play as well. And uh, But Damian Martinez did uh, more than enough, 100, 138 yards, average uh, 6.8 6 yards a carry. 
uh, absolutely had his way uh, with, the, with, the, with the Arizona State defense. Again, we talk about just not establishing line of scrimmage. I mean, that defensive line, that linebacker group just looks like they really gave up on, on, on most plays. Uh, I mean, Oregon State was just really running it, running it down Arizona State's throat uh, time and time again. But the one-dimensional um, offense, I mean, again, maybe it's a shame on me for like even saying that before the game because you look at the numbers and they're just unbelievable. 220 yards rushing. 220 yards passing for Oregon State. I mean, we, we thought about uh, an Oregon State passing game that's going to not even come close to challenging Arizona State. Boy, did they ever challenge them. I mean, it, it just in the field behind us, there were just wide receivers, tight ends for Oregon State just running wild. I mean, having more, you know, Greenfield than Julie Andrews and the sound of music. I mean, it was just absolute amazing to see just blown coverage after blown coverage when they were passing and they're running the ball. I mean, we just saw missed tackles galore. I mean, absolute uh, pathetic uh, performance by the, by, the, by the ASU defense as well. And uh, again, you just wonder, like, was it one point maybe in the second half that this uh, team just, just gave up? Uh, I mean, I know it's crazy even to say that, especially on senior day uh, when you're trying to play just for just uh, an ounce of pride. It would have been, it would have been a tough, tough uh, season. But, uh, I mean, as much as each of the ASU had on the offense, it's not the defense really, really did them any favors. Granted, one of the touchdowns was on a, a short field after a muff punt by D.J. Taylor, a bad decision-making uh, by, by him. But uh, overall, a really, really bad uh, performance by the ASU defense, which we thought had maybe some momentum after that Washington State uh, game where they shut out the Cougars in the second half. But in the first half, uh, they pretty much established a stone in every bad way. So, Hode, one last game coming up for the Sun Devils this next week, taking on their arch rivals, the Arizona Wildcats. Both teams not bowl eligible with Arizona's loss today. So both teams coming into this literally just with the stake of playing each other for the state territorial cup. Yeah, first of all, and look, not that Arizona State doesn't have a laundry list of problems to talk about, but look at the University of Arizona. What was that win against UCLA last week good for? Just to tease their their fan base that, oh, now if we, now if we win against Washington State today, then the Territorial Cup is not only for halting a five-game losing streak to the Sun Devils, but now it's also, also for bowl eligibility. So uh, I don't know, Nick. I'm, I'm saying this half-jokingly. I think maybe Arizona State and, and U of A maybe just forget about that game next week. I mean, there's really not much else to play aside from that five-game losing streak uh, to the Sun Devils that the, that the Wildcats are, are trying to break. But, you know, for Arizona State, you just wonder, you know, do they have really more pieces to pick up, uh, so to speak, uh, compared to the compared to rest of Arizona? I, I, I don't know. I just saw a, a very, very deflated team right now. And not that it's, quote, unquote, okay to lose to Oregon State, a team that now has eight, eight wins, uh, and, and, and look the way you did. But if they can look the way they did today, on Friday after Thanksgiving, in, in, in Tucson against the uh, University of Arizona, uh, the fan base is as frustrated a, a, as it is right now. I think that frustration level, that uh, disgust with the team might uh, k k kick up a few notches. So I, I don't know what Arizona State team we're going to see on, on, on Friday, but uh, for good or for bad, at least bowl eligibility is on, 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 on line for the University of Arizona. Uh, for them now, it, it, it's, it's all about pride. I like to think that that game next week for ASU is all about pride. But then again, I, I made the mistake thinking that today was really going to be uh, just uh, for, the, for pride for Arizona State. And we, we, some, we saw how that turned out. So uh, it's really, really hard to, to, to predict uh, what, what's, you know, what's going to happen. But uh, one thing's for sure, what we saw today was absolutely pathetic, absolutely embarrassing performance by the Sun Devils on both sides of the ball. Well, as always, for all the best continuous coverage going into that Territorial Cup, keep it locked in at DevilsDigest.com. Also drop a follow at Devils Digest on Twitter. For Hoderbino and the rest of Devils Digest, my name's Mick Borgia, and we'll see you next Friday in Tucson.